everyone, it's Brooke. Welcome back to my channel. I'm trying to record this for like the 14th time. The audio on my camera is not lining up with the video. It's never really happened before. I don't know what's happening. Look, my life is a mess. <laughs> I'm just like a stress ball. But I wanted to get this um, video up to finish out what I read in February. Uh, ignore the fact that for the next however many videos, who knows where the hell I'll be with my life in such a state of flux. The house is steadily getting closer to being ready to sell, but my brain is steadily getting dumber as we go along. So I'm not going to try to be super smart about what I'm going to say about these books, which is a shame because one really deserves better attention, but I just don't, just don't have it, but I want to get this up for everyone. So the first book I'm going to talk about is a memoir. It is Heartberries by Therese Marie Melieu. This is a difficult book. It uh, So she's still a fairly young woman. She's a North American native. She, a native North American. I don't even know what words and phrases and things are anymore. She grew up on the Seabird Island Indian Reservation around Vancouver, British Columbia. And it was a very dysfunctional, abusive upbringing. I think she eventually went into foster care. And she tried to escape that life by getting married very young, still a teenager, and having a child. That child was eventually taken from her right before she was about to have her second child. Um, and then she ended up hospitalized and diagnosed with PTSD and bipolar disorder. And she sort of, this is her sort of, or she started to write through herself through those things and that trauma and the memory of those traumas specifically. So this is not written linear, lin, lin, uh, in a linear fashion. Let's not, let's just, I'm sorry, adverbs, bad for me today. Um, and it's not easy. It's something that requires an active brain. It's something that I could not read right now. Uh, I think it actually might even require multiple rereadings. It just, it's so, I feel like this word is really overused, even by me, but I think this is the definition of raw. I mean, she does not shy away from not just the ugly things that happen to her and all the trigger warnings, um, but the ugliness within herself. Uh, it just she puts it all out there and she's really grappling with something she's not tr I feel like in a way you can tell she's a writer and she's like goes to school to be a writer but because uh, I think I think a lot of this is purposefully done but at the same time it feels just like a real emotional mental process um, to work through the things that she's been through and it it's it's it is a sight to behold, except that it's a book. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, I would definitely give it a shot. I don't know if I can say I loved it. Um, I think maybe I kept myself distance distanced from it a little bit because I feel like I'd only give it a three and a half stars, and that feels wrong, but it feels how I feel. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's definitely worth a read though and, and one of those memoirs that feels like it has more weight even though it's a lot slimmer than a lot of others I've read. So I look forward to seeing what she writes next. Really, I do. I do. Um, and then I read sort of I've been really excited about this. I, I mean it's really, it's one of those really big hyped YA releases but I don't know. I think the cover is really beautiful. And this, The Bells by Danielle Clayton. And I just heard so many great things. And, you know, it's about this society kind of like New Orleans. Um, but the fantasy world where everyone's born in this, like, gray palette. Except for these, like, girls that are the bells. And they, they're born like this. And they can make people look like this through, like, these sort of magical powers that are effectively like plastic surgery. 
um, and crazy secret shenanigans and violence and horrible things occur. Um, again, this is a book I'd probably give three and a half stars. I think the second half was a lot stronger for me than the first because I just didn't connect with the world building. And I feel like a lot of the first half is the world building and the way that Danielle Clayton writes this world. I think it will work for some people and not work for other people. It's just, she writes like all these vid, vi <laughs> forgive me, visual images and, and she makes all these lists of things she sees and it's very descriptive and flowery but in a very specific way and images that I just couldn't, that are not like grounded in reality so I had a hard time imagining them because I'm just not a very visual person to be honest. So I think it's a, a me shortcoming and I've read other people who had a similar hardship with it so I think it's very much just a personal how your brain works kind of a thing um, even like when I was reading Roxanne Gay's review of this I think she struggled with it too so so just whatever however my brain works I struggled with the world with the imagery in the world building um, but once I kind of calmed down and I got into more of the plot and the character stuff in the back half I did enjoy it more um, and I will read the second book, but I will say there's a trope in here towards the end that did not like. And I'm not, I feel, I don't know whether or not to talk about it because it is a major sp spoiler. But if you want to know more, I would suggest, if you want to spoil yourself, I would suggest going to Goodreads as several reviewers talk about it. Um, I didn't like it. I didn't think it was necessary either, so just, just a warning. Um, if you want to be warned about something, a queer trope that is used, then I would, I would go read some good read reviews and decide for yourself. Um, yeah, so I, I think the second book I will like more than the first. I'll say that. Um, and then because the brain is the mush, I just decided to read some superhero comics that were absolutely delightful and that is the Hellcat series. There's only three volumes so it's Patsy Walker aka Hellcat volume one hooks on a feline, volume two don't stop me now, and volume three careless whiskers which is just A plus punning and this is just a whole three volumes of a delightful romp with our girl um, Patsy Walker and her friends who are amazing and Jen who she Hulk who I've missed so much and it's bright and fun um, and filled with like great queer relationships because Kate Leth will always write some female female relationships in her books you know it um, so if your brain is mush too and you just want some fun here you go I wish Marvel just Honestly, sometimes this is all I want to read from Marvel, and I don't want the serious stuff. I just want to have fun. <sighs> Kate Leth is a fun writer. Okay, before my brain completely malfunctions, I'm going to go. But in the comments, you guys, if you've read any of these books and have feelings, let me know. What was your favorite thing you read in February? What was your least favorite thing you read in February? What are you looking forward to the most in March? And hopefully, sometime soon, but probably not. I'll have my brain back. Who knows? We'll see. Bye, guys.